you had conversations in uh, 2003 about that subject, did you not? Right. Uh, and you talked at the time with uh, uh, Sergeant Colburn? Yes. And you talked at the time with, uh, is it just Deputy Link? It's Lieutenant. Lieutenant Link, I'm sorry. Yes. Um, and uh, they told you uh, about these events that had occurred in 1995, as they recalled them, correct? Yes. Do you remember who else was involved in those conversations between you and, uh, well, let's start with Mr. Colburn? No, I believe uh, uh, both Andy Colborn and James Link came to my office at the same time. And with no one else? Correct. And you were with no one else? Correct. So it was just the three of you? Yes. Okay. And you talked about this uh, this matter of the 1995 telephone contact from an outside agency to the Manitowoc County Sheriff, correct? Yes. And uh, what did they tell you? Let's start with Sergeant Colton. What did, what did he tell you had occurred? He said when he was working in the jail, he had received a, co a phone call, I believe from a detective in Brown County, that uh, he had a suspect who said that he had assaulted a person in Manitowoc County and somebody else uh, was in prison. Uh, and that's about it. He said he uh, uh, referred it to a detective and heard nothing of it after that. In in uh, in 2003, you learn that one of the things that's happened is that not only did Mr. Avery not commit the crime that he had been convicted of and incarcerated for, but there was uh, pretty solid evidence that somebody else had done it, correct? And and in particular, Gregory Allen had done it. True. Correct. And. Uh, did you, at that stage, do anything in your department to try to figure out how that had happened? No. Did you conduct any internal investigation of your own department to see how this had taken place? No, none of the uh, people that were involved in the case in the investigative part were, the, any, were there. Uh, so does that mean that you had considered conducting an investigation but then decided after you had identified the people that were involved and learned that they were no longer there that there would be no point in the investigation? Correct. Uh, but that is a mental process you went through. That is, you considered conducting an investigation, you determined the identities of the people who were involved, you determined their present connections with the Sheriff's Department, you learned that they were no longer with the Sheriff's Department, and then decided there would be no investigation. Form of the question. Is that true? Correct. Um, when did you go through that process? Would have been about the same time the uh, district attorney told me that Steve was being released. Uh, and did you discuss that with uh, District Attorney Rohr? No. He's a district attorney who told you that, I take it, correct? Correct. Uh, did you discuss it with anybody in the district attorney's office? No. Did you discuss it with anybody on the Manitowoc County Board? No. Discuss it with anybody in the world? No. Make any memos about it? No. In your very first conversation with Tom Kasurik about this matter back in July of 1985, uh, you indicated that you were told to arrest Steve Avery for attempted first-degree homicide. Is that right? Correct. There's no reference of sexual assault? Not at that point. None. I mean, you, you had no idea what the circumstances were of the attempted first-degree homicide, whether there was a weapon, whether this guy should be considered armed. I mean, anything like that? No question. No. Um, and you had no idea who the... Uh, who the victim was? Oh, I knew the at victim. At that time? I knew the victim. You did? I knew she was. Okay, so so you knew he was... I mean, the information you had gotten from the prior shift commander, would that have involved sexual assault? It could have. Um, but 
again, your directions from Kasurik have nothing to do with sexual assault in the first conversation. It's all about homicide. Correct. And later, when you're at the jail, um, or at least after you've been, after you've arrived at the jail, you have a conversation uh, again with Kasurik in which he is talking about getting these samples. Correct? Correct. And the samples include pubic hair. Right? Correct. And based on your experience, you realize that you don't ordinarily obtain pubic hair samples unless there's an allegation of some form of sexual contact or sexual assault. True. Correct. Correct. Um, do you recall whether or not Tom Kasurik said anything in that second conversation about sexual assault? I don't recall anything specific, no. 